issues, you know, we can get a little update there. Okay, um, this last week um, was kind of an emotional week in some regards, and uh, I appreciate your words about divisiveness. And I'm not sure how many of y'all had the opportunity, and I would call it actually after viewing it, the privilege of seeing the McCain funeral. And how Megan spoke about her dad and her relationship with her father. But more importantly, I felt the passion and anger that she was speaking, her dad was speaking through her with regards to these particular issues that we're confronted with today. And uh, I do have to say that also I watched some of the Aretha Franklin uh, service, very moving and emotional also. And Jesse Jackson got up to speak. And one of the things that tied his speaking with the McCain funeral that I found most moving was the fact that he said there were longer lines to view Aretha than lines at the voting booth. And then today, uh, they were talking on the radio going over the percentages of voting approximately 25 to 30 percent of the voters who were eligible to vote in this last election voted. So that means anywhere from 70 to 75 percent of the people have not participated. Yet when we see things going on in our community, it seems like more than that are expressing their displeasure. So what I would ask is that for those of you who have any concern for the future of our direction and what was brought up a number of times was the more the words moral courage moral obligation and as we sometimes say moral compass so look within your souls and decide where you feel we need to be heading in the future that would be my statement for today and lastly, only a month to go for bolts. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, Anita Pros, 901 Bayshore Drive. In the 80s and the 90s, uh, Mayor, we always had a yearly report on all the bridges in Tarpon Springs for the structural safety. The one at the end of Martin Luther King, Ketra Powell Bridge, I know the one at the uh, Yacht Club, that's County, and the one at the uh, Light on um, Alternate 19 at Pappas Restaurant. We haven't had that, and it's very important because all of us use those bridges to get into town and go home. Uh, Friday, I saw uh, a big trailer pulling heavy equipment. We had to stop to let them get over the bridge. It was so wide and so heavy. And it used to be that we asked the school buses to come down mirrors to get to the schools for the safety. Um, after I got out of office, that stopped. I don't know what happened. But we need to have a uh, structural uh, engineering to make sure those bridges can handle all of this. And I can guarantee you, big equipment is going over that bridge at the Yacht Club, and big equipment is going over the bridge from uh, Martin Luther King around the bayou. And it's for the safety and the welfare, which is in your hands, for the citizens of Tarpon Springs. And I know it can't be done overnight, it has to be studied and looked at, but we really need to take a look at those bridges because there's been too many collapsed bridges uh, this past year. And I know for myself, the Martin, uh, the Ketra Powell Bridge, cars have to stop on it because the traffic has gotten so heavy around Riverside. 
So please, look at the uh, structural aspect of these bridges and let's give a report to the citizens so everyone will, will feel safe. And let's look at the issue of the school buses going over them and make sure that it is enforced. Those big uh, trailers with the heavy equipment don't go over that bridge at the Yacht Club because I don't know what the uh, time element now is on fixing that bridge and I think it's very important. Thank you. Are there any other uh, public comments? Thank you. The first item on the agenda is the library card sign up month. And I will read the proclamation. The city of Tarpa Springs, Florida. Proclamation. Whereas library cards is the most important school supplier of all. And whereas libraries play an important role in education and development of children. And whereas library programs serve students of all ages from early literacy to homework help to GED classes. Whereas libraries empower all people to pursue their interests, discover their passions, and achieve their highest potential as learners and citizens. And whereas librarians bring communities together, creating, welcoming, and ex inclusive places, uh, spaces for students for all backgrounds to learn together. And whereas libraries are constantly transforming and expanding their services to meet any of the uh, communities they serve. And whereas libraries promote quick equity, making digital technologies and information equality accessible to all. And now, therefore, I, Chris Salahuz, by virtue of the authority vesting in me, as the mayor of the city of Tarpa Springs, to hereby proclaim the month of September 2018 as Library Card Sign Up Month. Ed Perry. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, for this proclamation in honor of National Library Card Sign Up Month. Uh, we encourage everybody to get a library card if you don't already have one. We have many benefits that you may not be aware of, including downloadable music and ebooks and streaming mo movies, uh, online databases that teach technology, different languages. We have Career Online High School where people can get their high school diploma through the library. And uh, this month we're doing a lot of special activities. Uh, this weekend we're going to be at First Friday together with the Senior Information Center volunteers. And uh, we'll be at the uh, Recreations um, Back to School Bash at the uh, Splash Park promoting, um, we're going to have a book face contest. If you're not familiar with that, that's where you take a, a book with a person's face on the cover and you make it, take a picture, make it look like you're part of the, the cover. Um, we're going to have that with prizes from the friends. We're going to be doing a library survey to find out um, what you think of our programs and services and also to encourage you to let us know what new musical instruments you'd like to see. Thanks to the generosity of the friends, we're going to be expanding our musical instrument collection. Currently, we loan out ukuleles and bazookis, and we're going to be expanding that. Uh, also, on the 15th, we have a, a rock painting program. On the 17th, we have uh, St. Petersburg College uh, professor Kimberly Filos doing a special program for us. On September 24th, we have a DNA and genealogy program and also a technology class for seniors in honor of our Senior Information Center. And finally, we're closing out the month on September 29th with an incredible party. The Incredibles, the Disney Pixar family, are the honorary chairs of the library card sign up month this year so we're going to have face painting and superhero crafts and all kinds of fun activities and we'll be displaying all of our book face uh, contest entries at that event on, on September 29th. So we hope you will join us at the library and uh, visit us online and Facebook. Okay, thank you and I want to thank the uh, library advisory board, the friends of the library, all the volunteers, your staff for the support and outstanding service they provide to the uh, library and to the city information center. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any commission comments? Are there any public comments on this item? Here none. The uh, next item on the agenda is another proclamation, the National Day of Service and Remembers Vice Mayor Panther. Thank you. A proclamation, whereas on September 11, 2001, the American people endured the 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 the, the, uh, the, the worst terrorist attack on on on, on uh, U.S. soil in in the nation's history with courage and 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 and, uh, and bravery. 
And whereas in response to this tragedy, Americans across the country came together in a remarkable spirit of devotion and unity and carried out countless acts of kindness. Whereas on September 11th is a day of uh, where is a day to honor the memory of those who uh, who were lost and those who united in in response to, to to the tragedy, including first responders and volunteers. And whereas September 11th is is observed and 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 recognized as as an annual day of service and remembrance. And whereas on September 11th and on the days leading up to and following this day. Citizens have an opportunity to to participate in activities to honor 9/11 victims and heroes by joining together. Now, therefore, I, uh, uh, the, the the vice mayor, uh, the, the the vice mayor, um, uh, David Banther, by by virtue of of, of 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 the authority vested in the mayor of of the city of Tarpon Springs, Florida, do do hereby recognize September 11th, uh, uh, the, the, the 2018, as National Day of Service and Remembrance. And this will be mailed. Thank you. Any commission comment? Are there any public comments on this item? Here none. Thank you. The next item is a presentation update on a homeless issue. Chief Cushion. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, Board of Commissioners. Um, I'm going to try and go through this as quick as I can. I know we've talked about this issue before, but if I don't get through it in 10 minutes, the city manager is going to start glaring at me. So we'll roll through it. And if you have any questions, feel free to stop me along the way. So I want to talk a little bit about our homeless outreach efforts, kind of some of the strategies that we use for uh, the homeless within our city. Starts off real quick with our mission, um, basically um, reduce crime, enhance quality of life through cooperative partnership with the community. Our mindset, um, we know being homeless is not a crime. Some homeless individuals choose this lifestyle. We know it's a choice. Identifying and utilizing resources outside of just incarceration, general public perceptions and unrealistic expectations, and addressing the issues that arise in a professional manner to improve the quality of life of the individuals and other residents of the city. Understanding there are multiple reasons for homeless situation. We've, we've kind of gone over this before. We know lack of housing, poverty, addiction, alcohol, drugs, mental illness, those are biggies. Domestic violence, chronic health issues. Understand there are multiple issues for the homeless situation include, again, mental health, physical health, shelter, food, clothing, employment, identification. Our mindset, knowing there's a variety of reasons and issues, it's understood that there's just one way, there's not just one way to deal with things. Police department cannot simply enforce the problem away. I kind of talk about this. You really can't arrest your way out of this situation. You really have to have a multi-pronged approach. You really got to kind of start thinking outside of the box. That's why we work with all of our partners. We have a homeless outreach officer. But with saying that, arrest is still one of the strategies that we have to use, especially for the chronics, the ones that cause the problems for our business community and or command crimes that definitely pose a problem for our community. We do not turn our heads on that. We do arrest. Chronic homeless persons, these are the ones that we tend to have the most issues with. I, I don't really have a number of a percentage of, of how much they are. You know, you could look at five to 10 percent of the total homeless population. That's just kind of off the top of my head. But, you know, these are the folks that are causing us the problems. These are the folks we see annoying our business patrons, these are the folks we see that have open alcohol, they panhandle, um, they commit a lot of those violations that you see there, what we call common violations that, you know, that we'll arrest them for or have to deal with them on. But again, these, these are the people that really cause the problems. Accountability versus assistance, um, we believe it requires a balance, personal responsibility, accountability for behavior in the community. And we've started to kind of work. You know, we have a homeless, homeless outreach officer. We've made approximately 350 placements over the last three and a half years. That's a lot of placements. That's actually getting people off the street, as you know, and into programs that will help address, you know, one of those reasons why they're homeless, whether it be drug abuse or alcohol abuse or, or mental illness. But one of the things that we really started to, and we really had a meeting with the city manager and some of our, you know, folks in the community that provide services to the homeless, we have a very good working relationship with them. But we, we feel that, you know, some of these programs need to have some accountability and teeth. And, you know, when we're feeding people over and over again, then they're going out in the community and causing problems. Um, we really need to take a look at that. You know, the, the bottom line is, if you're coming here to get services, 
and you're causing problems in the community, either you go get help or you're gonna get arrested or something's gonna happen. So we really gotta start zeroing in on that issue you know, with some of the chronics. Currently, as you know, we have a homeless outreach officer. I have one officer assigned pretty much full time um, to work with these homeless individuals. And again, the chronics really aren't the ones going for help. It's more, uh, you know, people that become homeless and they, you know, the officer establishes a good rapport with them and, you know, we get them into programs that can address their issues. So we've been, we've been pretty successful with that over the years. And I always say, with, you know, there'd be a lot more people on the street if it wasn't for this program. They would, you know, we, our downtown and Sponge Docks area would, would definitely have more of a presence of individuals that, you know, fit this category. Some of our methods, um, again, you know, we look, we look to think outside of the box. We look to kind of have a holistic approach. We've already had 70% of our officers that had the crisis intervention training that deals with mental health issues. Um, we can, we're going to continue to send all those officers through this training. Um, we have right training for officers, again, all along the lines of how to deal with people addressing issues of mental health. Um, patrol officers have the highest rate of contact with homeless population, cannot and can connect with them can connect them, I'm sorry, with a homeless outreach officer. That's one of the things, again, officers working with the homeless outreach officer, trying to get these people into programs that can help them. Um, address immediate needs of safety, provide crisis intervention, so on and so forth. Partnership, provide essentials for basic living and resources. We have partners in the community. We know the churches, we know the Shepherd Center, um, Pinellas Hope, you know, again, services that expand out through the, through the county. But um, we've been very successful at working with the Shepherd Center and working with our partners to try and address these issues. Um, and, and recently, we, we you know, started really talking to them more about we need to really have some more accountability for some of the chronics that are causing problems and they're coming to our city or they're coming to the churches for services, but we're really not holding them accountable for their behavior in the community. So we're really starting to focus on, on that issue. And I, and I believe our partners are listening and I'm sure they'll have their input on that too. Um, three C's, again, contact, collaborate, communicate. That's kind of big, you know, again, we want to get these people into programs that help them. The arrest process, in many cases, unless it's a violent crime, is a 24-hour, you know, revolving door. They go down to the county jail, they go see a judge of advisory, and they kick right back out with time served and right back on the street. So, again, it is a strategy, but it's not gonna work by itself. Um, so basically, these are some of the things that we look to do beyond arrest and prosecute, working with our community partners, um, working with the homeless outreach officer. And, and again, that, that other leg has really been, and city manager headed up that meeting, you know, to really start looking at accountability for some of these small percentage of people that they serve that really are causing problems and are really not being held accountable. And, and we know that, you know, the, the Shepherd Center and some of the folks that we had in that meeting really started to listen to us and, you know, engage in some good feedback with us about, you know, how we can start doing this amongst all the centers. Because the goal is not to arrest, but the goal is to say, hey, look, you're causing problems in the community. You need to go get help. You need to hook up with our services or you need to hook up with the homeless outreach officer because if not, you're just going to get arrested over and over again. So that's the issue we're trying to, to work with a little better on with our service providers. Um, again, we talk about our movement. Um, you know, some of the things we've done, you know, we, one of the biggest things are trespass authorization. Uh, many of you heard is a lot of misinformation that went on about a recent arrest out of our Walmart property. And um, one of our service providers called me and we had a very good productive conversation about it. But basically we went out there on a fire and there were some homeless camps on, on the Walmart property. And the property owner didn't want the camps out there anymore. So we gave them warning not to come back there, you know, vacate the camps. We gave them a week to leave. They didn't leave. We went back and we arrested five people. And that's the kind of stuff we're not going to have tolerance on, especially when you're given a warning to leave and you're not leaving. So, uh, but that got blown out of proportion. And um, again, some of my conversations with some of the service providers, they understand basically with, you know, what happened, what the real facts of that situation was. Um, in the future, again, one of the things we want to do, working with city manager, working with our service providers, we really feel that last leg of the table is accountability, you know, for those small percentage that are getting services here that are not trying to get themselves help and are causing problems in the community. So, you know, with that, that's kind of an overview. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Any commission comments? Mission kick. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, for bringing this back to us. I know um, I had originally 
had this on the agenda uh, about a month or so ago and and I appreciate everybody that came out that evening. Um, and thank you again for being here, who's here tonight on behalf of this issue. I, I do hope that the city manager had said that he met um, with some of our organizations here in town. You met with them. Did, were you there as well, Chief, or do we have our homeless outreach officer? Um, myself, Major Trill, and the city manager were at that meeting. Okay. The homeless outreach officer has since gone to other meetings to start talking about this, but the initial one was the city manager, myself, and Major Trill. Okay, so he's been now attending, and that's really important um, that our out, outreach officer starts attending the meetings and um, everybody communicates. We need an open line of communication. Um, you know, it's unfortunate what's been happening lately in the area, but uh, I know when we had the issue with the Sun Bay and we had um, uh, Major Trill come up and he gave us a, a 12-month study of whether well, they beefed up patrol how crime had gone down over there so I you know I had still wondered about beefing up control and in some of the problem areas with with the the some of the chronic homeless people that live in our um, band shell down at the docks or downtown you know some of the business owners on their property so I don't know again I, I'll ask again if foot patrol is is do you think it's necessary we're doing it you are doing uh, bike it. patrol, okay. foot patrol. That's always been a part of our strategy, um, especially downtown. Um, even more of a presence now, you know, we're getting downtown. You're not really having a, a big problem with solicitation in the docks. I mean, there are issues down there, but it tends to be mostly downtown by Craig Park. But our, our patrols, our director patrolling are definitely increased in those areas. Okay. When the, yeah, I thought about bike patrol as well, because we do have, you know, right. we have them out on yep. bikes now, the police officers, and I think that's a great idea. So, um, you know, if we can continue to do that. And um, so you talk about some of these common violations. Um, so if somebody calls the police department and said somebody's intoxicated walking down the street or something, they, so we have an ordinance in place that they're publicly intoxicated, that we have an ordinance in place that the police officer would go out and arrest the person? Well, I mean, it depends on the circumstances. Most of that stuff you're talking about, disloyal conduct would be state statutes. We also have ordinances for open alcohol, panhandling, solicitation, but you know, it, it just depends on what's going on, what the facts of the situation are. But you know, if they find them to be in violation of one of these ordinances like anybody else, mm -hmm. um, you're also gonna make a decision whether or not to take them into custody or charge them with an ordinance violation or um, state crime. Because there's a lot of panhandling that's going on again in the public shopping center, you mm -hmm. know, and I... Yeah, it's... one of the biggest things that we work on with the shopping centers is trespass authorization. So a lot of times we have that, um, you know, I kind of call it the show game because we're trespassing them from Publix and they go over to Walmart and we trespass them from there and then they'll go over to another, you know, so we're constantly, you know, trespassing them and then it catches up with them when they go to an area where they're not supposed to be, then we end up arresting them. So when they get a trespass, they, does, they don't automatically get the first time go to jail somewhere. You just give them a trespass. Well, they get the warning first and then if they go back on the property, then they're subject to arrest. Okay. Because there's a lot of that happening in, you know, they're knocking on windows and stuff, door to, window to window, car to car in that parking lot. And um, I watched, I sat there and watched it. Of course, I followed them. But, um, and I yeah, called Mark. <laughs> we, know, we know what's going on. Okay. So in that situation, they can ultimately get arrested, you know, but they still get the one warning first. On the trespassing, correct. Okay. okay. Well, I, I want to thank you for um, keeping these uh, lines of communication open with everybody. And we, hopefully we can continue doing this, doing so with some of our organizations here in town and all working together. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Penn. Just thank you. I want to thank the chief, our, 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 our city manager, and our providers for working together over, over, over the past two months. Um, like I said before, you know, we're defining two different things here, vagrants and homeless people. I don't believe they are the same. And uh, to, to help, we're never going to solve vagrancy, but to help reduce it, um, I think it's gonna it's gonna take like 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 we've said everyone working working together. Um, you know I I do believe they are coming here for services outside the community, um, and that's just common sense. The fact that South Pasco has very little to, to, to no support for the homeless, and that the ne the next appropriate city south of here is Dunedin, so it just makes sense that this is where they're gonna be, um, and also where the gateway to 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 uh, to up uh, to um, to, to, to the whole county. So um, 
I would hope that, you know, um, what you mentioned about the, the providers wanting, wanting to, 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 to uh, cooperate for those that are causing problems uh, will happen, and I, and, and I believe it will. From, from my conversations with them, and, 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 though, and, though, and most of them I know, I know that they, 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 they don't want to waste their scarce resources on people that are causing problems. So that's something that I I I I I have hope that that will get uh, that will get reduced, um, you know. But one thing I think you know, and I'll I'll just be the one to say it is, there's that in between. Then there's the people that you know are vagrants that that, that we've talked about that, that that are causing problems that we all agree need 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 to go. You have the true homeless, those in need in our community that would, that we must take care of the families, and then you have those those in between. They're just homeless chronically maybe not causing problems per se but they're just in my in my opinion that they're still abusing services that's not something we as a city can obviously regulate because they're, they're not committing a crime but that's something I, I ask our providers you know when i get my coffee in the morning off off, off, off uh, hibiscus street when it's the morning for the greek church to do the to, to do the feeding they are lined up at 8 30 in the morning and the majority of them the, the the majority i see coming coming in on bikes are ones i see every single week one of one of them's a lady I tried to help for, for though for two years, and she just won't, she just wanted me help. So I don't have the answer to that. I'm not an expert in, in homeless services, but I would ask our providers as they're partnering with with, with the city to work with those to lessen those that are causing problems. We also, you know, I, I would I, I I would encourage you to not focus your 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 your, your, your scarce resources on those that are chronically there that don't wish to better themselves. And, you know, I'm always in favor of, 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 of what my church does over at St. Ignatius. We don't have a soup kitchen. We have a very uh, robust food, 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 food pantry that's very organized. And families come in need to, to, to get their food in a very private and, and, and a, very, a, very, a very dignified fashion. So those are my thoughts on, 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 on the matter. I agree, with, I agree with Commissioner Kicka. I think we need some more updates on this as it, as it goes down the road. On the side of of the vagrancy and and what and what um, increased patrol has helped with, especially those sleeping in the parks and and and, and the band shelter, and uh, again I thank our partners for providing services to uh, people in our community that are that are that are truly in need, and I would ask that they you know find find ways uh, to continue to to support those individuals that that want to get better. And not those that just want to use Tarpon Springs for our for our, our generosity. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Chief, thanks for the update. Uh, obviously, this is a, a sensitive subject throughout Tarpon Springs. As you can see, there's been a lot of information going around uh, for the past couple months. Uh, thank you for talking about the increasing of patrol in the chronic areas. I think that's an important uh, step to take overall. Uh, a couple things that stuck out to me in your presentation is being homeless is not a crime. I completely agree with that. Just like driving on 19 is not a crime, just like driving down Tarpon Ave isn't a crime. But if I'm going 60 down Tarpon Ave, I would imagine I'm going to get tagged pretty quick by an officer and ticketed. So it, it is important to find these individuals that are chronic and trespassing and making sure that it is a crime what they're doing and that it's not going to be accepted in Tarpon Springs if you're approaching people leaving Panera, or if you're doing inappropriate things in downtown or in the parks or drug paraphernalia. So thank you for the update on this. Um, people are around, I know people have said that people, that the homeless in Tarpon are only from Tarpon and I've had three interactions with homeless over the past two weeks. Um, people generally approaching me and I approached one family uh, I was in the wall, wall, what is it? I'm sorry. Winn-Dixie parking lot. And I had an individual the second time he's a, a, approached me. And he asked for, it's very specific. He asked for 1650 so he could buy a room for the night. And I didn't ask him where he could buy a room for that rate. But it was very, he was very direct at the exact amount of money that he needed. And it's the second time he's asked me for it. And he's, he rides a, like a, like a three-wheeler. And he's in his late 50s, early 60s. And, um, I don't carry cash, so if anyone wants to rob me, I'm not a good person to rob. Uh, so, um, it, it just, it, it was alerting, and I asked him where he came from, and he, he said, I'm coming from Dunedin. 
Um, and another young man, he's in my neighborhood on Saturday morning. He was walking the streets, and I was walking my dog, and he said, can I join you? I said, sure. Um, and he's asking for money, again, to find a place to stay for the night. And he, very specific, asked for $12.50, which I thought was kind of odd. Um, and I asked him, where are you trying to stay? And he, he mentioned a couple of places that he's trying to stay. So he was out in the neighborhoods. He was trying to find work. Nothing against it. I, I respect he's trying to find work. And then there's another family. Again, he came from Newport Ritchie. He wasn't from Tarpon Springs. Um, again, there was another family at Publix that I approached and talked to and um, let him know about some assistance in town and ask him, what's going on? Why are you like? Why are you in this situation? Do you have a job? Do you need a job? My company's hiring if you're interested. Um, the the young lady had a job. He was working a workman's comp and they had two young children. And so I let him know about the resources that were going that were available here in Tarpon, but they said they live in Clearwater. So that was just three examples that I personally came into account with. It wasn't that I went out and tried to find these people. It was just an interesting that I know the last meeting it was said that it was all Tarpon residents that are homeless and Again, it's just from my personal experience. It's not from going out and surveying every homeless person, um, but they were from all different towns. So yeah, I, I, I do. Would, I would back you up on that. I don't have the percentage, but we're getting them from South Pasco, Mid Pinellas, and in our own local homeless. So I don't have the percentage breakdown, but but you're accurate. Okay, thanks. Um, so with that, I do I do completely agree with what the other commissioners and mayor has, has mentioned, and what you've mentioned is. Um, talking about how it's a, a community effort with the organizations and the police department looking at the chronic homelessness and how we could help. Uh, again, I fully support, um, I, like I mentioned before, my grandmother, she's on a fixed income, Social Security. Uh, she could barely afford food. If actually She goes hungry because she doesn't want to take assistance from myself or other family members because she has only gets a limited amount of money on Social Security, and the majority of that goes towards uh, her house and rent and her car insurance. Um, and it's heartbreaking because we have a lot of elderly families in Tarpon Springs. We've got a lot of families that are a single parent with only a couple kids in Tarpon Springs, but it, it's hard for them to go out and ask for help because of prideful situations or whatever it may be. Um, and that's, that's really where my heart breaks um, when I see the widows and when I see the, the children that are hungry um, because of that. And I think there's an opportunity to maybe strengthen our relationships with the organizations to maybe target uh, these individuals in town and how we could help assist uh, these families and the elderly and the, or I guess the more mature um, demographic in our, in our population in Tarpon Springs. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, I want to thank you again for the update and I'll express my gratitude to our police officers for doing an excellent job keeping our community safe. Um, homeless is a situation that is not only in Tarpon Springs, but it's in every, uh, every city in the county, in the state, it's, an, it's actually uh, in the it's a national issue. Uh, and, and as I said before, our community is very, very generous. We have the churches that they're providing hot meals every day. And of course, uh, with the good people, we also get some people that are creating some problems downtown. And this is uh, a very unfortunate, but I know the police department is working very hard trying to um, to control this situation. Um, yeah, I'm very glad that uh, uh, the city manager and yourself and you were able to meet with the uh, providers and have creating a good working relationship and getting their, co their co uh, cooperation because this is going to be a community effort. It's not going to be just for the police department or just for certain people, but we have to work together. And what I'm asking is when uh, the churches, when the providers providing the hot meal, they need to approach the uh, uh, the people that they serve and tell them that yes, we provide you this meal today, which is good. This is the humane uh, way the thing to do. But also, there's help out there. We can provide you with the help. Let me let's let's take you to an agency that can provide you the service where you can actually get a health care, get medicines that you, medicine that you need. Uh, that you can get housed and you, uh, you get a job and learn how to complete an application and be a productive in this society. So we do have the agencies that actually can provide the services. And I can mention some of the uh, agencies that actually provide an excellent service, which is the uh, Panella Safe Harbor. 
Uh, this is an emergency homeless shelter that provide, they're providing services to anyone, including felons, drug uh, and alcohol abusers. They open 24 hours. The Panelas hope they're providing service, including health and uh, they're helping people to apply jobs and counseling, and they're providing hot meals every day. Directions of living, they're providing health services. The admit, uh, VA, the uh, Veterans Administration, they provide medical and benefits. The YMCA, they're providing services for families and, and children. The uh, Religious Community Services, they're providing services for domestic violence, addictions, and mental health. So they are, it is help out there. So we need to convince these people they need to the help to get the help that they need because that should be the goal for everyone, not just to give them a meal for the day because and, they, and we should continue doing that, but also to help them for the future. And I would thank you for everything the police department is doing. Well, well and stated. also all the churches that they're providing this meals for the homeless. Just, um, they're doing most of those services with a homeless outreach officer. Um, he visits the, you know, the providers, they, you know, that, that stuff's put out there. The issue is with the chronics. The issue is with the chronics getting them either help or getting them some other alternative because they're the ones that are really causing the problem in the community. And that's the whole thing, you know, the whole, that's the next step we're trying to take with the providers, so. And I think having this uh, great cooperation from the uh, providers, I think it's gonna be very, very helpful to people. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I'd like now to uh, go to the public comments if anybody wants to say something or if anybody has any public comments, please come forward. Come to the podium, state your name and your address for the record. You'll be given four minutes. My name is Kathleen Molson, and I live on Gross Avenue. Uh, my concern is the library, with the homeless sitting outside, and the smoking, and the, it's almost, it's, it's not a nice place to get into. Once you're there, it's a wonderful thing, but you have to go through the homeless people in order to get into the library. I spoke with the girl that was up before, earlier and she said that she would look into it however if there could be cameras on the outside so that people would feel safe not only you know walking into you know, when you walk into the library they they have cameras in the back but the front is the area where the homeless people feel more comfortable sitting uh, for long periods of time even all day you know, so you know and they do sometimes come up and ask you for a cigarette you know can you give me something you know for money um, you know, children this is a place where children should be comfortable going I, I'm not even comfortable I don't understand if if the children are themselves that's it thank you, thank you. any other comments please come forward to the podium Hi, my name is Ada Delgaze and I'm from the Shepherd Center. Uh, Mayor, I just wanted to let you know that we are working with people and we are working with those organizations and we are providing those services that you did mention and we are also working with other uh, organizations in order to um, deal with the situation with the chronic homeless. We have been meeting, uh, this is our third meeting and we will get in touch with, um, we just wanna have a, a bigger meeting to finalize everything where we will invite certain community people, of course the city manager and the chief um, to, to, uh, to bring what we have put together and our suggestions as to how we're going to um, try to help resolve this. Now, um, I just wanna state that um, the uh, vice uh, mayor, Mr. Panther, you, you said something about all of us working together. And I just want to ask, how do we work together in a community that has, in our city, that has a website that just puts our community down constantly? 
and that who knows who's involved. I mean, could be in your own office that knows about this website that's making our mayor and our city look really bad. So I, I don't understand how we work together on that, okay? And the people may be here in this room, you know, right now, the people that have put up this uh, 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 horrible website. And I'm sure that everybody has seen it that is sitting on your chairs. So how do we work together? How does the community work together when these people are putting our community down? And you know, it's funny, for the Shepherd Center, they put a, um, a Bible verse, Jeremiah 23.1, which literally, I mean, apparently they don't understand the meaning of that verse, and they should read verse two. But that's what I wanted to say. I'm just saying, you know, we have our community. We're all trying to work together. And I, I am just disgusted with what's going on with people in our city and people that are saying that work together, let's do this together, but they're the ones that are destroying our city, not the homeless. Okay? Thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. Uh, let, let me finish. Are there any other public comments? Good evening, Peter Delax, 514 Ashland Avenue. Um, it's interesting, the lady <clears throat> mentioned this website. Somebody had sent me uh, a link to it, tarpentourism.com, I think is what it's called. So let's put it out in the open so if people want to see what this is about. Uh, and from what I understand, I didn't go on to it. It's a website to disparage tarpon and such. But let's get back to the basic issue of what we're talking about here. This is not a new problem. I remember when I was on the board, we had all the downtown merchants coming down complaining about the drinking, the urination, the panhandling, and all that. And then we put the bathrooms in, then the issues continue. So what I'd like to really, if we've had all these meetings and these groups have been speaking with us, when I look at the, uh, the backup, one of the things I had curiosity about is the word teeth and no accountability, and no accountability showing up. Another comment was to hold service receivers, i.e. homeless, accountable for behavior. Uh, I'm not sure we're really in the business of dealing with people's behavior as far as how to get them. And then it says... Uh, Oh, where was it? In to having certain set standards. Well, what teeth have y'all come up with that you can share? The only thing I can think of in here in this discussion is keeping a list of who has all these violations and then giving them to the churches. And then when that person shows up, asking them for an ID, who are you? Oh, well, you're on the trespass list. You're not getting food today. Is that the behavior modification we want? All right, no food, you come back, no food. So your behavior doesn't fit the tarpon mold, you need to move. What other things are you referring to as far as how to create this accountability? And I see a lot of people here, I'm not sure if they're here for the zoning meeting or if they're here for some of this, but I see Mr. Haddad there. Maybe he has a comment to share with us. <coughs> But uh, I just would like to hear what some of these ideas for the accountability and teeth that were brought up and discussed so we may have the ability to eschew them and maybe find some tangent from them. Uh, but this is not a problem, as the chief said, that we can arrest our way out of. Uh, as he said, it's a cycle. And if you continue to provide services, which we are doing as a humane community, uh, how do you balance those out? So I just would like to hear some of the ideas that uh, were discussed and how y'all 
maybe came across some solutions for this. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments on this item? Margo Lizer, 514 Ashland Avenue. I'm fairly new to Tarpon Springs, and what I love about Tarpon Springs is the community aspect that I've experienced as I've been here. And, you know, Peter told me the story of Mother Mears, how she grew the garden and shared that with the community. And we have that big mural down, downtown that reflects that. It's such a nice story how she gave back to the community. And I've also noticed that within Tarpon Springs, that there are many oppressed and marginalized people within our community. And these folks are part of our community. Will the great folks of Tarpon turn a blind eye and not see the suffering of the poor and the marginalized? Will the great folks of Tarpon turn a deaf ear to the city of the oppressed? Folks will continue to be blind and deaf as long as we live in a reality of separation, them and us. The community cannot continue to thrive if it continues to live focused on the beauty and harmony only and not centered in love. Not a vision of individual love and separateness, but a, a community of oneness. We who live in Tarpon are called to serve our neighbors. To fill the cups of the thirsty, the plates of the hungry, and the hearts of the lonely. It is our charge to watch over those who are most vulnerable within our community. The homeless, the children, the elderly, the immigrants, we are in charge, you guys are in charge of them. We, that's your responsibility, you took it on. So in doing so, you will find that those that once were strangers have become guests, and those guests have become friends. Then we can join together as a community to flourish and to grow together stronger and wiser. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? No, no clapping, please, please. Are there any other comments? I hear none. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Have something to say? Yes, thank you. That, that's that's in response to the lady from the from, from the Shepherd Center that came up. She, she talked about you know working together and how is a website that until now I I have refused to mention in public to even dignify that that piece of trash. Um, how is it working together? Working together is not, ma'am, well, what you did at the podium. Working together is what has been done over the past two months with our city manager, our, our chief of police, and other providers inside this room that have met to find these solutions, the problems that we all that, that we all agree exist. And what's further disgusting is to imply that myself or any member of this board, by 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 a referencing in your office, is a part of that disgusting website that not only mocks people on this board, including myself, and also sheds horrible light uh, on this city, and then mocks people at their most, at their, at their most, at their most uh, you know, vulnerable spot is absolutely disgusting. And I take personal offense to that, and I can guarantee you, nobody on this board or, or city staff that, 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 I, that, that, I, that, that, that I'm aware of has any hand in, uh, I'm in that website. And if you're upset about that, 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 that website, then the best thing you can do is to ignore it and to help find solutions to, to, to prevent the things that, it, that, it, that, 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 um, it's talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I wasn't really going to talk about the website, but since it was brought up by uh, two different citizens and the vice mayor, I'd like to say that, and I agree with you. Mr. Vice Mayor, this is a piece of trash. I agree with you 100%. Fortunately, we have this kind of a people. Thank God it's only few. This website, not only, the only thing it does is it has negative promotion to the city. It hurts the local businesses and the image of the city of Tarpon Spring, which is so beautiful and a great community. In American, you can publicize anything you want 
as long as, and it's required by the law to uh, identify yourself. Um, you cannot hide behind a website or behind a proxy or any organization. This is a counter act. Until these people have the decency to identify themselves, I don't think it's worth it not even talking about it. Uh, I have no comment, but uh, I'll repeat what the vice mayor says. This is a piece of trash. Thank you. Just one thing, Mayor. Um, again, we've only been a two months into the process, and uh, we're happy for the most part until we got into something I'm not going to mention. Um, we're moving forward, and we're positive. Um, maybe I'm immune to it because I had 30 years of law enforcement, but it doesn't matter what you do or what you try to do. There's going to be hate out there. There's going to be ignorance out there. There's going to be a te I mean, it doesn't matter what issue it is. That's going to be out there, especially when you got an age of social media and people can be very brave. It's going to be out there. You deal with that even before that. Um, how you work together is you, you ignore and you fight through that. It has no effect on how we're going to work things, but again, I, maybe I've been around too long. Any issue, any time, any place, you know, the good people. We got so many of them around the table that I've talked to, all the group out at Ron, all, we got so many good people that do good. Um, you know, there's no need to recognize those people are out for them. There's no need to recognize them. You move on, you ignore them, and you go about doing your business to do the best you can for the citizens and the community. I'm very happy with the cooperation we had so far. As we get to the point and we get further into the nuts and bolts, that's the updates we're going to bring you right now. We've got the communication staff, and we come update you, some of the methods, some of the things you're doing. I know the chief tried to get the time limit, but he kind of took the last slide off there pretty fast. But one of the things that was on the last slide talks about technology, and that's exactly what you talked about of some cameras, because I can guarantee you some of the things going on and some of the problems being caused are not homeless people. But as far as more cameras in our areas, in our public areas, and to identify and do that, um, that was his last slide. We're looking at a citywide on our parks, on our places, so we have that because, again, knowing from when I did that, what the chief did and before, um, to lump all the problems going on as simply homeless is not. And one of the things you said about it is identifying those people. So we are working on some, some technology. Again, we're only two months. We, we made great progress in two months. And all the things you say and the continuing problems work on, we're working very positively. We've got a great group of people and organizations who have been positive and are working with us. And the dialogue is going to keep coming to you, and we will keep giving you periodic updates of that progress we get working with the people who care and ignoring the people who, who are just going to be out there because that's the way the world is. Thank you. And now we go into the uh, consent agenda. Number four is the minutes. A, July 24, 2018, the regular session. B is July 25, 2018, the budget work session. C is August 7th, 2018, the regular session. D is August 7th, 2018, budget work session. Number five is special events. A is the salsa on the sponge ducks, October 13, 2018. B is the Oktoberfest music festival, October 19 through 21st, 2018. C is the sponge ducks arts and crafts show, October 27 and 28, 2018. And D is St. Nicholas Vestas procession, December 5th, 2018. Six is to approve changes to commission meeting schedule for fiscal year 2019. Number seven is the award file, 180171NRS, single source purchase of chemical, mentary ski, and sulfuric acid. Number eight is the award file, number 180172NRS, a single source purchase of maintenance, and GRP services for GPS routers. Any items that you'd like to pull? I just have a comment on number six. Sure, number I, six. Okay. I know um, we're not looking past January of 19 right now, but if we could look at meetings after holidays, similar to like this one, um, when city staff's maybe not available on a Monday, it makes it a little more difficult to get some questions answered. And I know they're typically not large agendas too. But if we could look at those meetings and hopefully avoid these types of meetings um, right after a holiday, if possible, for 2019. We'll get a further discussion later on. So. Thank you. Thanks. 
Any other comments? Are there any public comments on this item? Here none. The chair will obtain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. In roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Luzis? Yes, thank you. And now we're going to the special consent agenda, which is <coughs> item number nine, health insurance <coughs> renewal. Mr. LaCourse? Yes, Ms. Niffin's coming up and we'll give you the three renewals we're talking about. Nine, the health insurance, 10, dental insurance, and property casual workman's comp insurance. Uh, turn it over to Ms. Niffin. Honorable Mayor and Board of Commissioners, good evening. Jane Niffin, HR Director. Um, I'm here tonight um, to recommend the approval of the health insurance plan 15 through the Florida Municipal Insurance Trust for a one-year period commencing October 1st, 2018. As you can see from your backup for the last almost two decades, the city has been searching for ways of saving money while providing decent services to its employees. It's included stepping down plans year after year, higher co-pays for employees to pay, and out-of-pocket maximums. We uh, recently, in the last few years, have actually redesigned the plan from a straight HMO with co-pays only to what we call a PPO slash EPO, which is a hybrid term for a hybrid plan, which has both co-pays and uh, deductibles. Um, some of the drivers, cost drivers of, of health insurance are plan size and demographics, including gender and age. The smaller the plan, the, type, the makeup of your plan determines some of the um, ability to absorb cost increases. Government mandates, mostly unfunded, increase costs. Uh, there's what is very well known in the, in the medical field. It's called medical and pharmaceutical trend. Now, trend is the percentage that is used to predict future increases in, in healthcare. It includes such things as advanced technology, um, leading to greater utilization, use of more expensive treatments, leading to longer lives, and also price inflation. And lastly, one of the biggest factors is what we call loss ratio. It's the ratio of claims paid to premiums collected. Uh, that quite often determines uh, what, what your increase for the, for the com upcoming year will be. As a city, we have uh, imposed some cost controls, the best being early intervention and utilization reduction. Uh, we have a wellness program, which includes uh, PHAs, which are personal health assessments, workshops, newsletters, and employee assistance program. We even have Weight Watchers, which we're currently running and has been very successful this fall. Um, smoking cessation. And last but not least, the, well, the wellness clinic. I do want to make one um, comment about this year's renewal. Um, it has to do with on, ongoing large claims. We've had 10 of them this year. Um, of, of those 10, um, only three have been incurred by employees themselves. The rest are dependents. And we have one ongoing pharmaceutical or pharmacy claim for one dependent uh, where the, uh, the plan has paid almost $315,000, and that's just in pharmacy alone. Uh, this year we have an increase of 6%, which is slightly below the average for the, uh, for the municipalities around here. Um, which is in, in, in view of what our experience is and, and what we have uh, facing us in lar large claims is a fairly decent renewal. Um, we're going to ask the city to pay 100% of the employee increase and share the, in the cost increase for dependents on a 50-50 basis. I'll entertain any questions. Well, I want to thank you for uh, presenting these good health insurance uh, plan for employees. I think it's a very, very good benefit, and our employees deserve to have that. Uh, the renewal increase this year is 6%, and the average is 67 so ours is below average. Um, the, um, the attachment to you that you provided to us shows that some of the uh, cities that actually are, um, their percentage is much lower than ours. Uh, All Smart is 5 Pinellas Park is 2.7, Seminole is 4. Uh, so one claim that, one large claim that we have, it put us above all that, is that, is that what you're just saying? It definitely has an effect. 
Um, they do tend to pool uh, cl large claims to o over the, the the whole league to lessen the effect on on individual entities, but there's still uh, a, a major impact on a plan of our size. And we'll look and see what the other cities did. If they did anything different, they were able to have a lower increase. Or not. I beg your pardon. Have you have you able to ask the other cities to see if that what they've done different in order to have lower increase? Most of them have changed plans. Oh, they did. They've gone down. The biggest method to do it is changing plans, which which results in higher copays, higher in payment, and stuff from the point. That's a traditional method of doing it. It's very easy. We you know we could get offered some things to go down, but you're going to greatly increase the cost, the copays. The, and stuff for the people. That's how some have achieved this. Um, if you look at this thing, again, most of the full service cities, which we are, um, you can look and the average will even be different where we are compared to them. Um, if you look at some of the other ones, um, again, in the one city that's a full service city, Pinellas Park, they look, they change their plan, which I guarantee when we study them when we're, and we look at it and stuff, they downgraded the benefits for the employees, which, you know, we have the, op we would have the option to do, but, um, and it'd be, it'd be, we look at that. One of the things we look at is, is the other cities and their plans and the cost, but you have to look at what are the benefits for your employees. And, um, I think that's where we exceed and keep it. Even with these high claims, I can't imagine with some of these high claims we got, if we didn't have the system that we had, what the, what it would be, especially you heard the farm on one individual, what just the pharmacy they pay. So. Again, when you look at the other cities, what's going on in the health market, um, we're, we're in good shape. Yeah. I really don't want to downgrade the, uh, the quality of the plan, so thank you very much. Commissioner Panther. Yes, thank you. I don't have any comments, but just thank you for your work on this. Mark and Robert will in, in a future year, because I will not be here for a while, that uh, you, know, you all consider going out to bid in a formal fashion to ensure that you have the best plan. I've already had the first meeting with the city manager of Oldsmar since we combined with the clinic, and we've had our first meeting to talk about for the upcoming year. So we've had our initial introduction, and we have further one to talk jointly what we may do in that process, though. So the first meeting has already been held. Hopefully one day we can just have the sunny here in Carpenter, not Oldsmar. Mm -hmm. I'm already sure. Thank you. Mr. Kitchen, you got a comment? Um, I just, you know, I have to agree with Vice Mayor. I think I'd like to thank you, Jane, for, for this. Um, uh, bring this forward to us tonight. But I would like to see us go out um, to bid and see what else options are out there because when I look at the price of what cost per individual is, you know, that we're picking up for the um, employee, I know out there in um, the private sector, that's about the cost that um, some people are paying now. So, um, and there's a copay, like a $25 copay. So I, I think that we really should. Um, before budget next year is go out for bid, get a couple, get a couple of quotes. I used to sell insurance, so it doesn't hurt um, just to see what's out there. And anybody would be happy, you know, they would love the business, so they would love to put quotes together. Thank you. Commissioner Cole. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, thanks for the update on this and your hard work when putting this together for us each year. Uh, I know I come across with questions that probably show up across your desk that are somewhat annoying and I keep being a pest, but thank you for answering those and uh, it's important I think for the, the residents and the employees know that they do have a really good health care plan. Uh, one of the struggles that we struggle with countrywide and no matter if you're in the private sector or in the government um, or wherever it's at is rising health costs and it's frustrating. It's never a fun thing to pay, but it's a great benefit to have for our employees. Uh, when I look at the $250 for an individual calendar deductible, that's substantially low compared to what I have or what I had in my private sector job and what my wife currently has in her private sector job as well. Um, it, we may not pay our hourly employees top dollar, but I think this is a great benefit to provide to our employees, um, especially the ones that are don't make as much as maybe a manager or someone that's been here seasoned uh, potentially. So it, this is a nice benefit um, overall. and. Although it is frustrating to see the cost going up, it is encouraging to see it's not as high as some of the other ones. Uh, I, I would go along to say what Vice Mayor and um, Commissioner Kikta mentioned, that we look at a bidding process. I'm always 
open for looking at bidding processes and all aspects of business, uh, especially if we could save money in a, a, an environment that we're going to see most likely a reduction uh, with the homestead vote coming up here um, in November. So another thing I've got a question for you, though, is the pharmacy plan, and we could talk about this off um, afterwards, and I would like to have some more information. I'm familiar with pharmaceuticals and how it works uh, for my what I do business-wise. Mm -hmm. So do you know what the WAC minus is for our pharmaceutical plan? Because I know you mentioned that it's, WAC is wholesale acquisition cost, and typically with a pharmacy plan, you have WAC minus mm -hmm. a certain percent. Um, and then my next, so th do you know what that is? And the next one is, do we audit what we're being charged based on WAC? Because WAC can increase on a quarterly <coughs> basis, depending on what the drug is or de depending what um, the type of product that's supplied to the patient. Um, we ourselves don't do it, but I do believe that the Florida League of Cities does. But I will check for you. Okay. And we could have a further conversation about that and go a little bit deeper into it. Um, because there's, there's usually opportunities where a generic is not being used where it could be used to, to save money. Mm -hmm. And then there's also, um, you find out that the, the, the pharmacy plan is we're actually paying more than what we should be paying based on the percentage of what the contracted rate is. And we have to be careful if we're not auditing those aspects. And maybe it's an internal audit thing that we ask um, our auditors at some point to look at over a period of time, uh, because that's a substantial amount of money spent on pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it's an important aspect and it's an important part that for our uh, employees of the city to have. I just want to make sure from the, the business perspective of it that we're um, checking on that. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? You're not. I need a motion. Motion approved. Second. Just for the record, you have nine. We're approving nine, 10, and 11 at one time. Is that what the motion so is? we're just going. We just do one. We yeah. just do individually. No, we do number nine. All right. Take care of it. Okay. And we're all call for number nine, please. Commissioner Carr. Yes. Commissioner Kikta. Yes. Vice Mayor Banther. Yes. Mayor Lavuzis. Yes. Thank you. Item number ten is a dental insurance re renewal. If you want to cover that as well. Yes, I will. Um, the city has probably seen and been with a number of. Uh, uh, dental care providers over the years, as probably as many as there are companies. Um, we finally landed at uh, United Healthcare through the Florida League of Cities. In 2016, the league was able to negotiate a, a better deal with Delta Dental. Um, Delta Dental has is one of the largest carriers in the U.S. It's recognized across the across the country. It does have more uh, local providers than United and. Um, the uh, cost of the plan was a lot cheaper. Uh, in fact, we were able to switch plans and save $15,000 a year just by changing plans. That happened in 2016. Um, the rates have not gone up. It's a pretty standard dental plan. Um, pretty, pretty much all dental plans are, are similar, just there's the odd thing that might be different, but this is pretty standard. Uh, there, there's been no increase since 2016, and there will be no increase for this, this coming year. So I would ask that the Board of Commissioners uh, approve renewal of this uh, dental insurance with FMIT using the Delta Dental Plan for a 12-month period starting October 1st of 2018. Thank you. I'm glad there's no increase. Any commission comment? Any public comments on this item? You know, I need a motion for number 10. Motion approved. Second. In roll call, please. Commissioner Carr. Yes. Commissioner Dicta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahusis? Yes. Number 11 is property casualty and work and comp insurance renewal. Okay. Again, I'm going to ask that you uh, approve the uh, renewal of the property and casualty and workers comp insurances with the Florida Municipal in Insurance Trust for a period of one year commencing October 1st, 2018. Uh, this year has been an interesting year. Um, I will cover a, a couple of the cost drivers that uh, have resulted in an increase for us. Um, our work comp uh, experience modification is very similar, but not identical, but for, pur for purposes of explanation, it's very similar to the loss ratio in healthcare. Um, we actually went up by 3.2%. Um, we 
Uh, we have a payroll, we have payroll increases, and payroll <coughs> increases uh, immediately trans translate into increases in premiums. Uh, that pushed it up by 5%. Uh, we also had some uh, increased losses in auto liability was up 38 percent, auto physical damage 31 percent, and I think it's fair to um, to say that the safety program is under the uh, police or police department, the fire department, and they have re recently um, uh, implemented a far more vigorous um, safety program, which is aimed at reducing the losses in these areas. Um, the overall increase is 9.15%, and there's sufficient uh, funding in this year's budget to cover that. Um, I would also like to point out that since 2008, the uh, FMIT has been returning the excess property premiums. That, it, together with uh, the uh, reduction in property uh, per year attachment to, over the last 11 years, our premiums uh, the net premium reduction was $789,645. So even though this, the last couple of years have not been the best for us, you know, other years have more than offset it. And we hope to uh, invigorate our safety program to make a difference. Thank you, Jane. Any commissioner comments? Thanks, Mayor. Um, I asked a couple questions earlier today about uh, the artwork. So the city is, if people in the audience and the residents watching, if you're not aware, the city um, has some valuable art, and it's one thing that we're making an intentional effort to is buying more art for public art. Um, I, I wanted to talk about that and how that's being insured uh, from a standpoint, because I know we've got some well-known artists, and we've mm -hmm. either it's been donated to the city or art funds have been donated or put into a fund to purchase these items and they're being placed throughout the city this year and in the coming years and we have some already in place. So the last thing I want to see is someone throw a brick through a painting, run over a statue that costs a significant amount of money and then drive off and then we're stuck with a bill to try to figure it out or not replace it. So can you just give me a little bit or a little better of an understanding of how these are protected? Um, basically they're covered under the uh, pro under our property. Uh, insurance they're not they're under the blanket insurance which means they're not individually listed however there is a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar maximum per year for all items we do have a thousand dollar deductible um, the, the cost is, or the insurance is based on uh, either what we've purchased uh, the purchase price or the recommended uh, price by the our public art committee okay. um, that's basically what we, we have in place right now okay so as we start to acquire more of this art, um, if we could just make sure that we're keeping an eye on our total, I don't know what you would call it, total assets that, mm -hmm. that are under the city umbrella yes. uh, to make sure that they're mm -hmm. insured appropriately. Yes, we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any public comments on this item? We hear none. I need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. A roll call, please. Commissioner Carr. Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Alahuzas? Yes. Okay. And now we're going to the ordinance of resolutions. Item number 12 is the ordinance 2018-22, police pension line of duty death benefit, uh, benefit. This is the second reading. City Attorney, if you please read the ordinance. Ordinance 2018-22, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending Chapter 2, Administration. <clears throat> Article IH, Pensions and Retirement Division 1, generally, paragraph 2-35, to 30, additional benefits for police officers of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tarpon Springs, amending subsection G, pre-retirement death, providing for codification, providing for severability of provisions, repealing all ordinances in conflict herewith, and providing an effective date. Second reading of Ordinance 2018-22 by title only is published in the Tampa Bay Times by title only on August 24, 2018. Mr. LaCourse, do you have any uh, staff report? We, we just have no new information from the last meeting when this was brought to you and unanimously supported. So again, ourselves with the PBA and the Police Pension Board <coughs> um, offered to you to accept this 100% plan death benefit with retroactivity. And tonight in this vote, you will finalize that. Well, thank you. Uh, we have no information, but I'm glad that the city Pension plan will provide this benefit to the spouse of the police officer who lost his life. 
during the line of duty, and uh, that's the least we can do. We're not always thank you for the services. Uh, actually, I want to thank every police officer for the service that they provide mm -hmm. in the city. Vice Mayor Pell. Yes, thank you. And again, I'll I'll shorten my my comments from two weeks ago. I I think that, that this is a very great night in Tarpon Springs. Um, you know, there's times that this this auditorium is packed for things that I don't consider that groundbreaking, but that's for people to choose. But this is a very ground groundbreaking moment for, for for two reasons. One, we're doing the we're doing the 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 a right thing. This is what this this is what the convict family deserves <clears throat> for the sacrifice that they've made. But also, we're setting the standard going going forward for all of our officers uh, that are in the line of duty. Should 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 though you know should this got you know God forbid happen again, and uh, again I know we were originally you know looking at the, the model that the governor set for the state, but I think we even surpassed that. So I think we 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 can know in Tarpon Springs, we have the highest and best policy to compensate the families of any deceased officers. So I just want to say thank you to to to, to the convict family for their for their patience. And again, thank you for every sworn officer we have on our staff. Uh, you, you all do a great job, and uh, I just I, we 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 just can't thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this this is a, quite an accomplishment, I feel, for um, all of our police officers, and I'm so happy that uh, we all were in agreement. I mean, I don't know how we could not have been in agreement on this um, this issue. I think. Um, it's a no-brainer. Anybody that puts their life on the line every single day that they, they wake up uh, at least deserves this 100% um, death benefit to the family, especially if you, you're, you, know, you die in the line of duty. It's just, I just can't believe that this was not in place, and I was kind of surprised to learn that. So I'm happy that we're able to um, offer this to the conduct family. I know it doesn't bring Charlie back, but I, I hope it helps. And um, I want to thank you all for being here, and thank you all to all our first responders. Thank you. Commissioner Carr. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I don't have a whole lot more to say from the last meeting, and thank you all for being here again tonight. Um, I mentioned in the last meeting that Tarpon Springs is a close-knit family, all the residents, the city employees, the officers, the fire department, and um, I think this is the least that the commission and the, the board can do is um, come together as a family and support the police department and to give all the police officers a peace of mind when they're running into a dangerous situation that their families will be taken care of um, and that that's an important aspect so happy to support the family and uh, thank you thank you are there any public comments on this item please state your name and your address for the record yes sir thank you Honorable Mayor and Honorable uh, Commissioners, and to everyone on the dais, my name is John Rivera. I'm the president of the Florida Police Benevolent Association. My address is 300 East Brevard Street out of Tallahassee, Florida. I'm also the area vice president for the National Association of Police Organizations um, out of Washington, D.C. Florida PBA represents some 30,000 officers across the state of Florida and NAPO represents some 260,000 across America. Um, I, I come before you to thank you. I know it's been a hard road, um, but I want to thank you. I want to thank the governor, Governor Rick Scott, for getting involved. Uh, certainly, Congressman uh, Gus Bilirakis, our Attorney General, Pam Bondi, and all the other organizations that have written letters uh, on the Condic family. Uh, thank you for having an open mind and a compassionate heart. Thank you for the comments that I've heard on the dais. And Chief, thank you for your comments at the table. Uh, this was, as you've talked about, in the homeless issue, and this was a collaborative effort. And this was us working together. Uh, and I will tell you that uh, for the officers and the families of these officers who risk their lives each and every day for your citizens in Tarpon Springs, to hear those kind words uh, from the dais really and truly goes a long way. I will tell you that I, I presumably will ask for a favorable vote, and certainly if it should happen, 
which I believe it will, you will be a beacon of light for the other cities in, in the state of Florida. I and my organization have, uh, were intimately involved with FRS, and the governor was gracious enough to sign that bill. Really and truly, without belaboring what you all have said, it really is the right thing to do. And so I want to thank you again. Um, citizens of, of Tarpon Springs are well served, as well as your employees. And thank you again. Thank you. Hi, as most of you know, my name is George Lofton. I'm the, the uh, president of our local uh, Police Benevolent Association, the Suncoast PBA. Um, and I work with John uh, a lot at the, at the state level on, on a lot of various uh, endeavors. Uh, I just want to express my uh, gratitude for the work that's been put in, both with, uh, with Chief Cochin and, and ourselves sitting across the table and, and coming to a, a solution uh, and closing a, a very uh, painful chapter that's, that's been going on with our members um, and, and securing benefits for uh, your police officers that are out there on the street now and in the future. Um, I understand that, you know, Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor, that, that you mentioned that, you know, you hope this never happens again and that you guys aren't in this position that, that we are in today. But uh, unfortunately, as Chief Coaching can tell you, um, with our line of work, it's, it's going to happen again. Um, and what you're doing here tonight, uh, whether it be, uh, you know, recent or, in, in my hopes, a long, long time from now, but what you've done, what you're doing here tonight is not only... Uh, protecting the, the family of the officer that, that's been lost, but you're also protecting every single one of the Tarpon officers that you see day to day now and going into the future, uh, should that or when that does happen again, that uh, their families are in a position where um, they have something to show for the sacrifice. So thank you. Thank you, Chief Cochin, uh, and, and thank you all for, for working with us. Um, and I, the biggest thank you I have to say is for Teresa because her strength and her courage uh, through this entire process and, and working not only for every single current member of Tarpon Springs Police Department, but those coming forward uh, can never be measured. And, and it can have, and there are no thank yous enough that, that can appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening. I tried to say this without crying. Um, my name is Teresa Kondek. Most of you know I'm Officer Kondek's widow. I just wanted to thank everyone for being here tonight and to the commissioners, thank you for your part in making tonight possible. When I asked for this change, I didn't ask for just my family. I asked for the department. And I didn't ask for a penny more than what my husband earned before he was killed serving the community, but I had no idea how extremely emotionally hard this was going to be. I'm thankful for what's happening right now, but it's still really hard to talk about his pension because it was something Charlie worked so hard for. He dedicated 23 years of his life as an officer working overtime in details to pay more into his pension so that he could support us when he retired, but he's gone. And like I said, I wanted this not for just my family, but for all of the officers because they, need, they deserve to know that their family will have 100% of their pension if God forbid the day ever comes that they don't make it home. The pressure and stress and worry that comes with putting on their badge to serve the community never leaves their mind, and that's a lot to carry. So for those who helped me and voted to support this change, thank you. This change gives the officers and I a little less to worry about and I think it was the right thing to do, and our officers deserve that. But what you're doing is setting such an example for other agencies and departments. So on behalf of my family, both Blood and Blue, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Are there any other public comments on this item? Yeah, no. I need a motion. Motion approved. Second. In roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Loses? Yes, thank you.
Next is item number 13, the ordinance 2018-18, the application 18-69, rezoning, LUA, Protos. This is the second reading, quasi-judicial. The city attorney will read the, um, the title and it will explain the quasi-judicial process. This is the first and reading. And I have a note here that uh, Vice Mayor Panther will recuse himself. All right, for clarity of the record, this is the first reading of this ordinance, Ordinance 2018-18, an ordinance of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, amending the official zoning map of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida for approximately 0.68 acres of property located at Lucille Drive, App 18-69, including lots 4, 5, and 6, Ferguson's Cedar Bluffs Edition from zoning designation R100, single-family residential district, to zoning designation R100A, single family residential district, providing for findings and providing an effective date. First reading of ordinance 2018 18 by title only. Second reading to be held on September 18, 2018. It was published in the Tampa Bay Times by title with a map on July 27, 2018. Uh, this is quasi judicial. Uh, at a quasi judicial proceeding, the commission acts in a quasi judicial rather than a legislative capacity. At such a hearing, it is not the Commission's function to make law, but rather to apply law that has already been established. At such a hearing, the Commission is required by law to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented and apply those findings to previously established criteria. The Commission may only consider evidence that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues. If that evidence demonstrates that the applicant has met the criteria established by the Code, then the Commission is required by law to find in favor of the applicant. If the competent, substantial, and relevant evidence demonstrates that the applicant has failed to meet the criteria, then the commission is required by law to find against the applicant. All witnesses must give their testimony under oath. All persons testifying must give their name and address for the record. All testimony and questioning must address matters that are relevant and material to the issues under consideration. The city staff will present its testimony and evidence first. The applicant will have an opportunity to cross-examine city staff. Applicant will then present its testimony of witnesses, and city staff will have an opportunity to cross-examine the applicant's witnesses. Members of the public opposing the application will then be given the opportunity to present testimony. After all members of the public speaking in opposition have concluded, members of the public in support of the application will have the opportunity to present testimony. Each member of the public is limited to four minutes. The applicant will then have an opportunity to make a closing argument or a summary, after which city staff will be given an opportunity to make a closing argument or a summary. Following this, the commission will consider the matter. Commissioners may ask questions of witnesses. A motion will be made and a vote will be taken. At this juncture, I'd ask for the, uh, the board to disclose any ex parte communications on this application. I just had someone reach out to me in favor of this earlier today. and I ran into Ms. Protus at Publix last night, but we talked nothing about the application. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd ask for anyone who wishes to uh, testify this evening to please raise your right hand and be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And with that, we'll hear from staff first. Uh, excuse me, I have a correction. This is the first reading, not the second reading. Sure. Thank you, Bill. Mayor, commissioners, um, Heather Erler, um, your planning and director and uh, staff to this application. This again is an application amending 0.6 acres of real property located um, at, near Lucille Drive or along Lucille Drive from R100 to R100A. Um, essentially, this application um, is adjusting the land use um, similar to the land use that was adjusted just to the south of it in the Bayshore Heights area. Um, part, part of that Bayshore Heights subdivision replat that was done in 2016. Um, essentially, the land use is consistent uh, between, there's consistencies between um, the R100 and the R100A land use, or the land use is staying, remaining the same, the residential very low category. The density remains consistent is the same. Um, essentially what changes here is um, the lot dimension requirements, so the minimum lot dimensions are slightly different and um, the setbacks are slightly different here. Those are the two um, main issues that change. There is some uh, differences in what is allowed based on those particular um, parameters. As a result, uh, the criteria is met for, the, um, for this uh, zoning amendment to move forward. The land development code uh, has been satisfied and the criteria for um, this amendment and the consistency with a comprehensive plan has been uh, met. 
Uh, there are facilities available to serve um, any future development on these sites. And essentially, this is recognizing the underlying plat. So this area had R100 zoning put on top of it. The existing plat underneath had substandard lots when that R100 zoning was put on there. With this R100A zoning, it basically allows those individually platted lots to be used in, uh, as they were originally platted. As a result, the technical review team reviewed this application on June 9th to, uh, to sorry, June 28th, 2018, and they found it consistent with the land development code. And staff is uh, staff is recommending approval of this application from the change from R100 to R100A. Again, the single family residential use is the use that uh, remains for this property. And on Monday, um, August 20th, 2018, the Planning and Zoning Board heard this application and the board um, recommended uh, moving this application uh, forward to you with approval. And with that, I can answer any questions that we may have. Any questions for staff? Seeing none, does the applicant wish to present to commission this evening? Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. I'm Cindy Terrapani, 22 North Spring Boulevard. Tonight I represent Mrs. Protos, who is the applicant in this uh, case. What I've passed around is the Ferguson's Cedar Bluffs edition. The plat was approved in 1958, so it's over 60 years old. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. P Protos purchased all six lots in 1985. Her home is built on the two lots to the east, and one single-family uh, lot has been sold off that fronts on Bayshore. The three lots we're talking about tonight are four, five, and six. They're the western section of that block, and it's in, uh, shown clearly in the maps in your staff report as well. Um, as Ms. Erweiler mentioned, Bayshore Heights is one lot south of us um, and has probably 60, 70 lots or so that are R100A. So we're requesting that same zoning. Between R100 and R100A, the difference is primarily is lot size. So in the R100, it's a 10,000 square foot lot size. We're asking it to go to R100A, which is a 7,000 square foot lot size. Of the three lots, one of them meets the 10,000. The other two are 9,500. Uh, one is almost 9,600. So we're just very slightly off the 10,000 uh, square foot minimum. So that's why we're asking for this rezoning. Uh, clearly, you heard your staff recommended approval. The Planning Commission recommended approval. There was no objections at that hearing. Uh, it is consistent with the comp plan and consistent with the criteria rezoning. And we honestly think it's just a fair way to recognize the property owners purchase. They purchased six lots. They wanted the ability to sell these three lots, the western ones, as three individual lots for three single family homes. So I don't have anything further to add. I think it's a, a fairly straightforward application and fair when you consider uh, what you have done recently with Bayshore Heights to the south. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions for the applicant? Does either party wish to conduct any cross-examination? Uh, no, sir, but I would like, if there are any speakers, I would reserve a little bit of time for rebuttal if there are any speakers. Fair enough. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Seeing none, are there members of the public wishing to speak in support of the application? Harry Andropoulos, 907 and 905 Bayshore Drive. I'm the person most affected by this zoning change as I own all the property across the street from it. I am not opposed to this rezoning request. The only reason I'm here is about the drainage issues. When they put Bayshore Heights in, they put a culvert across from Mrs. Protus's property to my property, my property being the lowest, which was designed nutsly to let the water normally drain in its way it always drained even though they put the road across my only concern is when they put the houses in across the street which is fine i'm not opposed to that at all is that they either close that culvert or require the houses to drain onto the street like all the other houses in tarpon springs are required to do that's my only concern that's the only thing i wanted in the record i don't oppose this uh, motion to rezone it. Three houses, three lots is fine with me. Thank you. 
Did anyone have any questions or want to understand what we're doing? Okay. Does the applicant wish to make a closing statement or summary? Oh, we have more. Please. I'm going to ask you to come to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. I'm really new, nervous. Hi, Anita. I, my name is Rhonda Wiener. I just brought the property next door to you. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I'm the single owner. I don't know what to say, but it's a great property. I'm thrilled to be your neighbor. I love the property. I love the whole thing. I just picked up and moved from Margate, New Jersey after living there my whole life and dealing in the casinos, I had enough of the cold and the wild life there. I just can't take it anymore. I'm retired, and I can't take that lifestyle. I just can't take it. My boyfriend was older, and he passed away. He was an older man, and I just can't do the cold and the shoveling. And So I met... Over the years, I've been running a place on Orange Street, and my friend Kathy is my neighbor up in, the, the woman sitting over in front of me lives in Tarpon Springs, and, and she lives around the corner from me in New Jersey, and she said, come to Tarpon Springs. So I've been running around the corner from her for years, and I said, you know what? I'm going to pick up. I sold my house in 10 days, and I moved down here, and I found a great property and sold my house, left everything, and here I am to a great new start in my life. Left my sister up there. I don't really have any family, but here I am by myself, and I have a couple friends and new friends, and it seems like a wonderful community and a lot of nice people. And uh, I'm going to start and be a happy person. And I know you're going to be a nice, wonderful neighbor. And I'm really going to like you. And you're going to like me, too. <laughs> I'm quiet, really. I like to sit outside. I have a, two little dogs. They're not real big. And that's what I like, just to sit out. You don't like dogs? Oh, but the, I'm going to have a little yard fence then. Coyotes? My dogs won't be out anywhere. They'll be in my house on the side where I'm going to fence it in. Bring this in. So just want you all to know. Well, we appreciate that, and welcome to Tarpon Springs. <laughs> I'll be a good, wonderful neighbor. All right. You'll see me sitting outside waving to everybody. Thank you. So just wanted to tell you, I love to be here. That's all I can say. It's nice to see right. you. Are there additional members of the public wishing to speak in support of the application? Uh, no, it's not talking to you. It's talking <laughs> to everybody else. Yeah, you You're just You're wonderful. Fine. You're fine. <laughs> You're doing I'm good. Not by the no, not at all. Okay. There you go. Again, additional members of the public wishing to speak in support. And seeing none. Ms. Tara Payne, would you like to make a closing statement? None. Thank you. Staff? Not at this time. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Well, thank you. Uh, are there any commission comments, questions? I, I just got a couple of comments. Thank you for speaking and supporting the application, I suppose, from the public. Um, it's good to see public support on these. Uh, and you're welcome to come back anytime for any other comments that you'd like to come back and visit the, the commission meeting. So. Thank you. The uh, building director is over here with us. And I'd like to ask the question that the concern that was just raised, the, uh, the drainage, that should be addressed during the... Huh? Oh, you are? Okay. 
Um, the drainage concern that should be addressed during the uh, site plan review. Am I right? That's correct. That'll be that'll be addressed individually for the houses that are built on those properties. Okay. It's not an issue. It's not an issue relative to these criteria for the rezoning. Thank you. Chair will detain the motion. Motion to approve. Second. And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Mayor Lahuzis? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're now going to the item number 14, which is the resolution 2018-17 to approve memorandum of understanding creating the uh, Tampa Bay uh, Regional Resiliency uh, Coalition and Mayor Chris Alacuzos. I read the resolution first, Mayor. Uh, yes, if you please read the resolution. Resolution 2018-17, a resolution of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, approving the Memorandum of Understanding creating the Tampa Bay Regional Resiliency Coalition and endorsing participation in the coalition, providing for findings and providing an effective date. Resolution 2018-17 by Tide Lonely. Thank you. I asked for this resolution. As you know, I am serving on uh, Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. One of the issues that we are uh, working on this council is the uh, rise in sea levels to the counties Hillsborough, Manatee, Pasco, Citrus, Hernando, and Pinellas. Actually, this resolution is to approve the uh, memorandum of understanding to endorse the Tampa Bay Regional Council to address this uh, issue that we have the uh, sea level rising as a team for all the counties. To us in Tarpa Springs is actually a uh, continuation of the workshop that we had back in March 16, 2018 of the item that I had placed on the agenda to discuss the uh, rising of the sea levels and also to discuss strategies to improve the stormwater management drainage. On March 7, 2018, we passed the ordinance 2017-26 to update the coastal element of the comprehensive plan to include the sea level rise. Uh, the uh, policy 3.1.5 indicates strategies for the sea level rise. This is one of the strategies to improve the stormwater management and drainage. Just recently, uh, we had a presentation given to us by uh, Mrs. Larson, and I want to thank her for doing that. Uh, as you all know, uh, we already have started doing things to improve the stormwater issue. We've been proactive, and uh, with the leadership of uh, our city manager and our staff, we purchased three properties to build, the, uh, to build three retention ponds, one on North Avenue, one on Gross Avenue, one on Gulf Avenue. And also, we, uh, we addressed the issue, the stormwater issue, on, on the uh, Dodecanese Boulevard. Um, actually, there's two projects that we initiated on that location. One is to uh, install check valves to prevent the high tide street flooding and also to increase the stormwater pipe size. And the second is to, uh, to build a stormwater vault with a pumping station on the lowest part on the deck on this boulevard, and we're waiting on the engineer design. Um, this memorandum of understanding is to endorse the Tampa Bay Regional Council and to address an issue that everybody's experienced here in Florida on the sea level rise, and as a, do that as a team. And I will thank you for your support. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, are we committing to like a person? Are we committing like a person from the commission to be a part of their coalition? Or are we just as a city joining Actually, the coalition? Actually, um, you mentioned that I am part of the team. But this is for as a city. Okay. This, is this, city. this memorandum of understanding is for as a city. Why? Okay. For the city to be able to be part of. Okay, great. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing. Perfect. Any public comments? Ms. Larson, no? Come on. Thank you. Since we have no comments, I will ask for motion. Second. 
And roll call, please. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Commissioner Kikta? Yes. Vice Mayor Banther? Yes. Mayor Lahuza? Thank you. Well, that concludes the regular session agenda. And we go to the staff comments, police chief. No comments, Mayor. Thank you. City attorney? No comments. City manager? See you again tomorrow night for our first public meeting on the budget. Thank you. City clerk? No comments. Vice Mayor Panther. That was a hard act to follow in this, <laughs> this meeting. Different things. Um, uh, no comments. I just, I think we can talk about, Grant, can we talk yet about your senior transportation with the STA yet, or are you waiting on that? Almost. We're almost. We, we almost, almost there. Okay, we almost I'll wait, there. I'll wait, I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait to um, do it properly then. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like everybody to know that you represent us with the PSTA. And, uh, uh, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming soon. I'll, so. I'll wait till we can officially unveil. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. No. No worries. <laughs> Commissioner Kikta. No comments. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, I'm super excited about Spongebob football. I know that started uh, about a week and a half ago. Uh, it's good to support our hometown team and our home hometown band. Also, just a reminder for everyone watching, we've got a lot of great local businesses. This is a slow time of the year for restaurants um, with school going back in session and also uh, the tourism not as high as it typically is in other parts of the year. So if I could encourage you to check out and visit your local restaurants to make sure they feel the support from the local community. No other comments. Thank you. I have uh, some announcements to make. Thursday, September 6th, we have the uh, Sunset Beach concert that starts at 7 p.m. Friday, September 7th is the first Friday from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. on Tarpon Avenue. September 8th, the uh, Rotary Triathlon on uh, Fre at Frehauer Park, that starts at 7.30 p.m. Of course, for the uh, Rotarians, we've got to be there at 5 a.m. I I, I think set up Friday. That you do the, you do I got the, I got the early yeah. shift. I got the early shift. I mean, I'll be in bed there. <laughs> Um, Saturday, September 8th, uh, back to school splash at the Splash Park that starts at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And also Saturday, September 8th, we have the fundraiser for our city employee, Mr. Mike's one son, John, who has been recently diagnosed with stage four colon cancers. And the uh, fundraiser will be at the uh, Fairway Pizza and Sports. Uh, at 2901 Alternate 19 in Palm Harbor from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm asking everyone, please, everyone to attend this fundraiser. With that, that concludes the uh, regular session meeting, and it's adjourned at uh, 820 p.m. Good night, everyone.